We have a few upcoming sessions. Uh, we have uh, the following nine weeks scheduled with one of them. There is not going to be a SQL Friday because I'm going to be out in the bush with the, the local scout troop. But uh, you see the schedule here. It's also on sqlfriday.net slash schedule. So check it out there. Uh, the, you can already sign up to next Friday with Kevin Chant and Sander Stad, and the week after that with Mark Hayes. And I'm going to add the meetup events uh, later on for the rest of them. That is all for me. Uh, I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to hand over the stage to Damir Matasic. Is that the correct way to say your last name? Yeah, it's almost. Almost. Okay, <laughs> let's not practice language. Uh, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to monitor the chat, but the stage is yours. Thanks for Thank speaking, Damir. Thank you very much for the introduction. Also that you invited me to speak and also for organizing this event because it's a great idea. So I hope that uh, we, will, we will be able to listen a lot of useful sessions. And that's really great. So I am Damir Matešić. It's actually the right pronunciation, but it's a little hard if you are not from, let's say, Croatian or Balkans countries. Uh, and who am I? So actually, I was for many years a developer, mostly programming in C Sharp, ASP.NET. I was also using many other technologies, like starting from ASP Vanilla, WinForms also. I was using uh, Clarion uh, a long, long time ago. I was also using Oracle and Oracle Forms for a short amount of time and uh, my first interaction with SQL Server was actually from version 2000 on my faculty and uh, in my 15 years professional experience I oriented myself in SQL development and something a little bit about optimization and performance tuning. So last eight years, I'm working for a company named Span, and my current position is senior database developer. So for almost two years, I'm leading the Croatian SQL Server user group. We have meetings once per month. Uh, with some friends, I also introduced SQL Saturday event in Croatia. Last year was the first year we had this event. And hopefully that this year, after two reschedules, we will have it. So you are free to join us, but there is already a wait list, but we will see what will happen. Uh, when free, I am blogging something about SQL Server on my blog. You have here contact information and feel free to contact me if you like. And also this year, uh, Microsoft rewarded me as, uh, with the MVP status for my contributions to the community. And I also like to speak on various conferences and events. So that's about me. Now, what's the topics of today's session? We'll talk a little bit about JSON and introduction. Uh, then we will see uh, how uh, can we actually convert SQL data sets in JSON format and how to read JSON data in SQL, uh, how we can modify JSON documents in SQL. And finally, we will finish with some uh, functions and tips and tricks, let's say it. So I suppose that you already know this, but we can repeat, of course. So what is JSON? JSON is uh, JavaScript-oriented notation. 
is a language independent open standards format for data exchange between application and services. Uh, you can store only data in JSON format and it is simple and very popular. It is uh, commonly used, for example, in Ajax applications, web services, REST, uh, NoSQL databases, and uh, in these days, almost everywhere. So in simple words, JSON objects are human readable lists of key value pairs. As you can see the example on the right side of the screen. So what's about JSON? Uh, JSON supports only three basic data types. So strings, numbers, and Boolean values. Plus, of course, the null for representing null values. All other data types should be casted in one of these. So, for example, there is no date time data type. Dates are, for example, represented and processed as strings. So you have to cast this. Uh, JSON string is sequence of Unicode characters surrounded by double quotation marks. Uh, of course, special characters must be escaped. And here you can see the escaping rules for that. And control characters are always represented by the backslash plus U and the code of the character. So here is also the example. Okay. Uh, JSON is somehow similar to XML. At least uh, it can be used uh, very much like XML. And uh, here you can see one example of a customer record in JSON or in XML format. And of course, at the bottom, you can see the SSMS result set of the same record in SQL Server. So it's pretty much the same. But uh, there are, of course, some differences. Compared to XML, JSON format is less verbose and easier to read. JSON object usually contains less data than XML object. Uh, usually, I will show you later if this is true. And it's uh, more adequate for network transfers because if you have less data, you have a faster transfer, of course. JSON format contains less text than XML format and data in JSON format are represented by arrays and objects, while uh, XML is a tree structure, and uh, XML can store more complex data types and is more robust than JSON, for example, and that's good about XML. And XML can also store additional information, while JSON can store only data. Of course, XML uh, is better supported in SQL Server because it has own data type and JSON doesn't. And uh, why? Why? Why should SQL support in JSON? So this is the main question. And uh, the answer for that could be that uh, like XML, JSON is a standard and it should be supported. Other vendors also support it, of course, like Oracle, PostgreSQL, and others. And uh, such of them, like for example, PostgreSQL, are very serious and robust uh, interpretations of JSON. And uh, of course, many different frameworks. I mean, developer frameworks in those days use JSON like web services, applications, etc. So it's nice to have uh, also the support for that in the database. OK, uh, that's about the introduction about JSON and the differences with uh, XML. 
So let's see how we can actually convert SQL data to JSON. So it's uh, if you are already used, for example, XML data in SQL Server, this is pretty much like creating an XML document in SQL Server. Uh, XML you can create by using four XML clause, while uh, for the JSON, you have four JSON in the select statement. There are two modes supported for uh, JSON clause. One is the auto and the second one is for JSON path. So the auto uh, will, as a result, you will get that the JSON output will be formatted automatically and the path uh, meaning that uh, using aliases, you can uh, create the output. You have uh, three options for now. One is include null values, that because normally null values are not mapped to JSON property. Uh, the property is missing in the document. We will see it later. Second one is uh, root, that uh, you can add actually a single top level root element to your document. And uh, the last one is without error wrapper. And using the without error wrapper option, we can format the result as a single object. Uh, of course, we will see that in examples very soon. Because uh, this demo, this presentation will have a lot of demos. And uh, last thing, uh, you know, because of limited data types used in JSON format, uh, Microsoft SQL Server will convert the data types by the rules visible in this table. Uh, there are some data types not supported, of course, and these are geography, geometry, and CLR-based user-defined data types. Of course, uh, when you convert JSON to SQL, you must cast the data. So let's jump on the demo. Uh, do you see, uh, is the screen readable to you? It looks good, I think. Just okay. uh, if anyone thinks it's too small, just tell us in the chat and I'll uh, I'll tell Damir to extend the size. OK, so let's start uh, how to convert uh, SQL data in JSON format. So we said you have four JSON auto syntax, and let's try to select gin tonic as a drink to JSON. And of course, we get a nice exception here. Why? Because the for JSON auto syntax required at least one table. Okay, uh, I will use world wire, worldwide importers database, and let's try to create a JSON from customers. And of course, we get another uh, error because uh, this table had some columns of type geography and geography or CLR objects are not, uh, cannot be casted to JSON. Okay, let's see XML result and it's the same. So also you cannot directly cast geography data to XML. Okay, uh, now let's eliminate these columns and let's try to select some normal columns and the current date, of course. And if we try this, we will get also an error because we must provide a column name. So every selected, of course, uh, value must have a name because of uh, the JSON document because other, otherwise, it's not possible to create a JSON document. And this, here we have the first and pretty much good result. 
and let's use the normal editor to format this. And here you can see uh, what SQL created. So this is an array of customers. You have many records and of course you have uh, name and value pairs, of course. And all the data, for example, here you can see that the data was normalized a little bit because of uh, special characters and date time is a string because you can see that string starts with double quotation marks so this is all about json okay uh, this is the same data of course in tabular so in sql and of course you already know that and let's see the xml so compare this to an XML document. Okay. Here I will see. So this is XML and uh, you all, all know that JSON is smaller because I told you so. So let's see. JSON have 1,500 characters almost. Let's compare this to XML. You have the result of 1067. Okay, I lied to you, of course. So it seems like XML is smaller than JSON. But uh, to be honest, uh, I don't like this format of XML and uh, it's not so easy readable to me. So actually, I would like to include uh, XML elements. And if we take this example of XML, it's of course more readable than the last example. And paste it here. You will see that we have more characters than JSON. Of course, this is a basic example. And in XML, you can have uh, much more data, headers, uh, Etc. So it could be very large. Uh, uh, okay. Question it, from yes? the chat, Damir. It is you. from Alexander. Hi, Damir. What's the maximum length of the JSON in the result set? So <clears throat> I guess is it returned as an nvarchar max or what's? Yes, uh, JSON is an nvarchar max. So that would make it. Uh, two gigabytes in size. I yes, guess. but uh, this, if you look at the result in SSSM, uh, visual, uh, then you can have problems with options. Just you must just adjust here uh, in options how big a result you want to receive. Actually, but yeah. uh, uh, later I will have an example. Uh, you will see that there are some limitations for uh, key key value pairs. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, the other syntax, as you remember, is for JSON path, of course. And uh, the same example with no table used works actually in, uh, for JSON path. So for JSON path, don't require to have a table. Okay. Uh, another thing, uh, using the for JSON path, you can create more complex uh, documents, of course, and this is nice. So let's see what we created here. For number, we said uh, we were using alias contact dot phone and contact.fax, okay. I will select this, execute. We'll, Maybe uh, now for the younger members of, of this meeting, we need to tell them what the fax machine is, but that's for later. <laughs> and here you can see the result. So it's, uh, the result is more readable and uh, in this way you can create more complex results so now you have for example customer id customer name and all the contact informations in another object 
So this is the way if you want to make uh, nicer documents, but see that you get an error because all the nodes that you plan to put in uh, sub node must be together. So uh, you cannot have uh, like this. It's SQL is not so intelligent. So this actually could work just in this way. OK, so you must group by all the elements that you plan to put in sub nodes. OK, how JSON is uh, uh, using uh, it's converted when you have null values. So this is the normal approach. I actually made here a little trick case if customer ID is two or five, then I have null. This is a great way to accomplish the task. And uh, if we format this document, you will see that some customers don't have a website URL and as you see, the node is completely missing here, so it's blank here and here. OK, uh, if you want to have null values, then you can use the include null values. Of course, you must specify this. And right now, the result is pretty much better, or maybe not, depends what you want, but now, the two elements has website URL now. So all depends uh, what, what you like or prefer more. OK, I told you also that you can uh, include the root element node. So let's include the root that's actually called customers. OK, let's see the result of that. So we have an element, we have a customer array, and we have customers here. So this is the difference because we didn't have this root element node. OK, let's move further. So, OK, I will take this example. This is we are starting from just to be able to compare. So this is one customer only. OK, we will uh, try to use the without array wrapper. So if you notice here, you have this without array wrapper. This is the array wrapper, this. OK, and if we get use the without array wrapper that can be implemented, you get something different. So you get just this element without the error wrapper, of course. And uh, you remember that we can actually add a root element before we had this example and try to add a root element. And you can't, you get an exception, of course. I'm not sure why this limitation of SQL Server but for me, it's something like a little bit stupid. But uh, you cannot use the root, L, root with without a wrapper in combination. So bad luck. OK. Uh, this is all about that. Uh, do we have maybe some more questions because we uh, before we move to the second section? There is one question from Alexander again saying, hi Damir, is it a good idea to <clears throat> include the null values when returning the JSON from an API, for example? I have added some of my takes on it in the discussion, but uh, I'm happy to hear your take on it. So uh, null values are not in an API. Okay, if uh, it's a good idea to include null values for return JSON from an API. Uh, if you use these uh, values in SQL, it's the same because you will be able to read equally the, the nodes. You will get actually null values 
uh, if you have or don't have uh, these new values included in the document. So uh, from the point of SQL Server it is uh, the same. I think that uh, these null values are pretty much uh, it depends if you, for example, send the data to an API from SQL, then you must decide if you need them or not. But it's your decision. Uh, Alexander, are you happy with this explanation? In mobile application, it's good practice never to serialize no. Okay. Okay, so I actually don't uh, make mobile applications. I use only SQL, so I'm not sure what's the best practice. And uh, I told you it's uh, it all depends by use case by use case. And I think as long as long as it's clearly stated for whoever is the consumer, if it's going to be included or not. I mean the. The consequence of not including the null values is that you will have one element with maybe three keys and the next element only has two keys. And if that's acceptable for the consumer, then it's good. Otherwise, it's not. So it's all up to whoever is going to use it. Yes. OK. Uh, Jesus, there is a discussion about this. OK, I, I will would like to move on if you agree okay so json to sql uh, to read uh, json data and transform it to sql format data sets you can use the open json uh, and uh, there are two possible ways to use this. Uh, one is with the default schema and uh, one is with explicit schema. So default schema, uh, of course, the schema is not specified <laughs> and explicit schema, the developer can specify, uh, specify the schema of the data. Uh, so firstly, the default schema. Uh, when you don't specify the schema of the returned result, the open JSON function function will return a table with three columns. Only three columns you have. One is the key. This is the name of the JSON property or the index of the JSON element. And this column is nvarchar 4000. So it's not max. Okay, here. So actually, the key can be up to 4,000 characters. The value, uh, this is the value of the property or index, of course. The data type of this column is nvarchar max, and nulls are allowed, of course. And the third column is uh, the type. This is the JSON data type of the value. Uh, the data type of the column is tiny int, and you can have uh, five possible values, actually six. So zero is for null, one is for string, int, true, false, array, or object. So object is actually JSON inside a JSON. Okay, let's see how it is working. So demo. Open JSON with default schema. Okay, firstly, I will show you that actually JSON was implemented in SQL Server 2016. So if we change our compatibility level to SQL Server 2014, 14, we will get, of course, an exception because it's not working on that version of SQL Server. So let's go back to 2016 or something. We have a JSON document. Let's say, let's, it's pretty readable, I think, but let's paste it here and format it a little bit. 
So we have a name, John Doe, some blog address, the number of the year he was born, favorite drinks. It is an array of elements, of course, and parents. Okay. So we will use uh, this document all the time. So select star from open JSON and the variable of varchar max. Okay. And we get the first exception. So JSON text is not well formatted. There is an accepted character J found in position 11. And what we missed actually, we see here that we have actually an error, and this is that something is missing here. So the name key it's, uh, has not been closed. So SQL Server was pretty much intuitive, and he can give us a near location where the actual error occurred. Okay, let's try to. Oh. Sorry, uh, we corrected, of course, this document, and now we get a table with three columns, key, value, type. And of course, you must know that one is string, two is number, zero is null, etc. So to help myself, I will create uh, simple functions, and I will use this function. to get know what is. So you will see that this was strings, int, null, true, false, boolean, and favorite things in an array, and parents is something complex like an object. OK. Uh, let's select the parents node. And so I get here. Open JSON, the JSON document, and I won't see the parents node. So I get another table here with two parents and their name. So actually, the SQL Server <coughs> interpret did interpret here as a JSON uh, document. Okay, let's select a uh, non-existing friends node because I, I don't have friends, of course. And uh, <coughs> we get nothing, so no results are returned, and that's all okay. Uh, you can use the strict options option. So this is the same like this, but you must, same example, but now we are using the strict option and when we are doing this we get an exception so this strict can force us to be able to recognize if the document is valid or not so we can say to the developer you didn't send me the friends note and i want to have friends you know so this is the way how you can actually uh, control uh, if you get all the required data, for example, in one uh, document. Okay, let's select favorite things not. Okay, these are objects, of course. And okay, if you want to, uh, we have spaces here in the keys. So this is also normal, like favorite space drinks born after Woodstock. This is com completely normal because you are using quotation marks to mark this. But if you want to select favorite drinks and you try it to do it wrong, then you will get, of course, the error because you must also use quotation marks. And if you don't have spaces, then you, you don't have to put quotation marks. OK. Uh, let's return at our PowerPoint. So open JSON with explicit schema. 
So something very similar like XML data in SQL Server, of course, we can specify uh, our own schema when reading JSON data. In this case, the function will also return a table, but the output columns and their data types can be specified by the user. So the user is in charge uh, or developer, SQL developer is in charge to specify data types and name of the columns. The schema of the JSON data can be specified using the option with, with key, keyword. So I see on the PowerPoint, you have this width and you specify one or more columns. So one column is, is required for that. Let's return to our demo. Okay, this is the same document we had and it's pretty much the same like before. So select star from open JSON, the JSON document, but the difference is width. So actually I am specified here, the name is NVARCHAR 2056, and it can be found here, the location of this. Born, spouse, favorite drinks, like this is in JSON, and parents also is JSON. Okay. Let's run it. And we get a normal SQL Server data set or table in one row. Okay, uh, what will happen here? So as you remember here, I was using as JSON and here I'm uh, not using this as JSON. I only give this nvarchar max and the result will be null. So maybe I was hoping to get a string, but this is not possible because if uh, SQL Server uh, thinks that this is a JSON object, then he will uh, return now, of course. Okay, uh, another example is here. And the difference is that I used varchar max, and this is uh, not a uh, good data type. So if it is a JSON object, then you must have the nvarchar max because JSON data is stored as nvarchar max. Okay, uh, using uh, cross-apply operator, you can of course uh, read the sub nodes and this is handy sometime. So I will get here, okay, duplicate data of course for John Doe because I get all the drinks and I did it using the cross apply. So of course I am reading in the first in the first select, I use favorite drinks is Envacher Max of type JSON, and then I'm, I'm passing these favorite drinks to <clears throat> cross apply open JSON, and I specify there is a name of the drink and how often I drink that. Okay. And if you use outer apply, you will get actually null values because uh, Paul Denton don't have any children's, for example. And uh, if you use this same example with cross, it's pretty much same like inner join. So you will not get the Paul Del Denton that don't have children because uh, you will not get this also if you are using inner join. Okay, uh, let's go back to the slide a little bit. Yes, some value. Uh, it's used to extract a scalar value. Uh, this is one of the two functions we do propose to extract values from JSON text. Uh, the second one is JSON query, and it will be on the second slide. JSON value is used to extract a primitive data type value 
for example, null string number of Boolean, of course. And uh, one important limitation of JSON value function in SQL Server 2016 is that a variable as second argument, meaning JSON path, is not allowed. So you cannot use a variable for the path. In SQL Server 2017, uh, the variable are supported. So it was a small improvement. Uh, in the extracted value, if the extracted value is no is longer than two uh, four thousand characters, the function will return null or an exception. It depends. We will see. Uh, meaning that in lax or a relaxed mode, it returns null, and in strict mode, you will get an error. Uh, JSON query is used to extract a JSON fragment or to get a complex value type, array of object, of course. Uh, the function returns a JSON fragment or type and varchar 4000. Uh, the collation of the return value is the same as the collation of the input expression. If the value is not an object or array, in uh, lax mode you will get null and in strict mode you will get an error. Okay, I know that sounds a little bit complicated, but uh, let's see, uh, jump on some examples and it will be easier. So uh, you have something similar in XML, of course, of that. So we have our standard document and now we are not using like before open JSON, but we are using JSON value. So every time, for every column, we are taking our document and specify the path of this. If I run this, I will get the table, same like before, and <coughs> I get the favorite drinks. As you can see, it's an array, and I specified here that I want the first drink. And if I uh, trying to get a non-existing node, I get null value for this. Okay. Uh, I mentioned before that you can use strict. And if you use, so this example before is was the lax one. And if you are using the strict, you will get, of course, an error. So this is also the way that you can check if your uh, document is valid. OK, uh, let's try to large JSON property value or string more than 4000 characters. You will get null because I try to create a JSON value that's uh, more than 4000 characters here. But if you use the strict then you will get an exception. So this is, uh, it's acting differently. So here you will get null. And if you are using the strict, you will get an exception. Okay, uh, JSON query. I told you that it is used for uh, complex data types. Let's try to select this. And you will see that all, all we, the only result readable, let's say it's favorite colors, because actually favorite color, colors is an array. And uh, you cannot read with JSON query sim simple data types. So all the simple data types are null. But of course, if you use the strict adverb, you will get an exception because SQL Server wants to have here then all arrays or all complex data types. I hope that uh, this is clear. So before we move, move on the next section, uh, do we have some questions maybe? We have a question from uh, Maya, which is, uh, it's quite a wide one saying, Maya, uh, let's scroll up a bit. 
uh, maybe this is question for the end of the presentation. Uh, what's your opinion about database design best practices? But then it's a colon, so I, I sense there is a part of the question missing. Here it comes. Yes, more on performance overview. What's the best practice to design tables and databases that will store data? So I, I think it's still quite a okay, large topic, maybe. So. Yes, I think that we are talking about different session because we can talk about database design for hours, I think. And some people will <laughs> will have uh, five days uh, sessions about that. So yeah, uh, it's going to end with us. Uh, it, it's going to end yes. up in a fight because we're not going to agree on things. With yes. Jason, I guess it has to do with what's performance. It, 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 Okay, performance let's, when storing a JSON in, in columns in, in a table. Let, let's put this aside for now. So maybe we will have some answers and the, at the end, or maybe we will schedule another session with uh, good database design. <laughs> okay, uh, next topic, modify JSON data. You have uh, a function called uh, JSON modify. And it allows you, of course, to update the value of an existing property to add, for example, a new element to an existing array, insert even a new property and the value, of course, of this property. And with uh, modif um, JSON modify, you can also delete a property based on the combination of modes and provided values. So short, let's jump on the demo. Just modify. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, here. Uh, we have a JSON document. It has a name and a blog URL. And I want to add currently presenting. Okay. So John Doe is currently presenting. The original document didn't have this node and I used JSON modify to add a new node. So what's the syntax? You can use JSON modify. The input was the variable containing JSON document and I want to add a currently presenting. But we have a problem here. I want to have a bool value because one can be bool or one, of course. And about uh, bad database designs, never use int value to specify true or false. Okay. You can, of course, or big int. You can store one and zero in big int, but uh, this is not a good decision. So if you need to store only zero and one, you can use the bool. Okay to be able to accomplish this, I must use, I must cast the data in the data type I want to be presented. So uh, SQL Server, uh, don't know if I want this one as bit or Boolean or not. So actually he's making a number of this, but if I specify, the cast, then I will get what I want. Uh, okay, let's try to see uh, what's happened if I use the strict. I will get, of course, the error. Why? Because this node is missing. So, uh, Strict, when you use strict, as you remember from previous examples, you will get an error if this node does not exist. Okay, uh, let's add meetups. So I have meetup list and varchar document I have, and I added this as a string value. So as you can see, there are quotation marks at the beginning and quotation mark at the end. So this is a string value, okay? But if I want to have this as an legal array, 
meaning that this will not start with the quotation marks and not finish with the quotation mark, I can use this JSON query. So JSON query specifies to the SQL server that actually this meetup list is an array or JSON document. And this is pretty much like the cast one to bit. This is the casting to JSON element. Okay. How can we remove uh, the JSON property? Uh, it's pretty easy. So you just take the note you would like and make it as null, of course. So here in the original document, I had favorite drinks and it's pretty big because I like, like to drink everything. And I told to SQL Server, so modify the JSON data, take the favorite drinks and convert it to null. So SQL Server removed this node completely. Okay, uh, I can also use it for, uh, I, if I have two meetups, for example, I can specify, uh, I don't want to remove the whole node, I want just to remove the first element. So I can do it by specifying the uh, element order number. So the first is actually the zero. Okay, uh, let's try this. Okay, what happened here? If I want uh, to remove something from the array, I must use the JSON query, of course. Uh, this is another idea of this. Because you can notice the difference uh, okay, I cannot run it uh, in the same time, but you will see that the first example replace it. So actually, uh, new SQL 2016 with null, and the second one when you are using JSON query completely removed this item. Okay, updating uh, for update is. Also, you are always using JSON modify, so the JSON document, the node you want to replace, and blah, blah, blah. So we started uh, with meetups, new SQL server functions, and we replaced this with something about new SQL functions. <clears throat> okay, let's try to replace a non existing, of course, element and nothing will happen, of course. So we don't have lectures, of course, but we can use append adverb to add a new element. So we started from uh, new SQL server functions and SQL and JSON, and we added a new element, something about new SQL functions. So this is the way how you can append something. Okay, let's see. Append an element in non-existing lectures node, and it's possible. So actually, SQL Server created for us a new node named lectures and created an element with that. Because if you see, we started from no lectures. Okay. Uh, change the first array element in non-existing. Let's try to use the strict, of course. And you will get an error because lectures must first exist, then you can use the strict adverb, <coughs> of course. Uh, update JSON property to null, but using the strict, what will happen? Something will happen, of course. So favorite drinks, it's null, so it's not removed. 
of course, how can we make multiple changes? Any idea about that? I will not look, look at the chat now, but of course you must multiple calls have. So this is pretty handy, like uh, you all remember, of course, load trim, load trim, and uh, replace, replace, etc. This is JSON is not an exception of this. So it you looks must, amazing. <laughs> yes, you must call JSON modify, JSON modify, and it's pretty much readable, of course. So I make two changes here. Okay, happy with that. Let's return to our slides. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. Are there any questions, maybe? Uh, it's. I'm writing so much silly stuff in the blog in the chat, so I can't see the questions. No, I don't. They, there was a question about the possibility to get the scripts and uh, and so on later on, and I answered that uh, I will get the scripts and the presentation from Damir, and I will upload it to SQLFriday.net. Yes, you answered it correct. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, let's continue. We, we have, I don't, I think five more minutes. Okay, uh, we have a nice uh, function. Is JSON created in SQL Server, and uh, it actually check if the input string is a valid JSON data, uh, and it returns an int value with three states. One for yes, zero for no, and now if it is now the input. Uh, so there is one problem with that function that actually each JSON does not check the uniqueness of keys of on the same level. So you see that situation here on the right part on the screen. Uh, this will return one so this is a valid json document i don't know if really in some cases this could be a valid document but it depends of course and the last thing uh, we will see some tips and tricks so we can of course import json from a file on the hard drive uh, we will see what about indexing JSON data because you know that XML supports indexing. And this is index uh, XML is well supported in SQL Server, but JSON don't support indexing. So you don't have a JSON data type because you must use nvarchar max. And of course, you don't have create new, I don't know, cluster JSON index. This this not doesn't exist in SQL. And uh, we will see two or three handy examples of using JSON in SQL, and we will finish them. So let's go. Okay, is JSON. So first is now, because the input was now. Second is invalid, of course. And the third one is a valid JSON document. Yes, and I told you this, so this is a valid JSON. I'm not sure, yes, somebody maybe here is a developer can tell us if this is a valid JSON document, but from the point of SQL Server, this is valid, and he will take the first value if you are trying to get the name node, okay? Uh, but for example, if you are wondering, you are designing a database table, test user setting table, that must have a key of nvarchar max and app settings in JSON format, how you will check that the inserts are okay. You can make a constraint that actually check if each JSON is one, okay? And this is the way how you can check if uh, the inserted value are okay. So let's try to insert now, and this is okay because now it's a valid JSON, of course. 
let's try to insert an invalid JSON document. And we had a problem. The insert statement conflicted with check on strength because this is not a valid value. And third one, this is a valid JSON, so the select actually it's going on. And now we had inserted two values, one with null and one with actually the configuration in JSON format. <clears throat> okay, we could actually set here not null, sorry, in our design, and the, the first case will also be not possible in this example. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, import data from JSON, it's bulk insert. Of course, you must specify the path of the, to the file and you will get here a pretty simple example of a small JSON document we want to read from the disk. Okay, uh, indexing JSON data. So I actually told you that uh, there is no JSON index, of course. Uh, let's create a test table. Let's insert uh, this table uh, roles from sales customers table. Um, oh, I already did that. Okay, sorry. I didn't drop the table before. And uh, let's see how the indexing is working. So select star from JSON indexing where JSON value is Idaho city. Okay. And uh, if we see the execution plan, this was a scan and we had total of 75 logical reads. Okay, but this table is small. And uh, this is a little bit problem because if this table would be large, then we had performance problems. Okay, but what can we try to do? We can add, change the table and add a compute column with JSON value. I think I already created that, of course, and you can create an index on this computed column. Okay, and now let's try to run, run the same select again. So, what is now the result? Oh, we have an index scan, key lockup, okay. And if we see here in our statistics, we have only seven logical reads. So it's faster, of course. So one possibility you have, you can create computed columns and you can use JSON value with that. So you can actually index computed columns. And this is a performance boost. Okay, let's drop the index. Second option is to create a full text catalog and then you can use the full text search. I already created that. So let's find Idaho City. I get one result, of course. Execution plan will tell us that full text match. So full text is used and we have only two logical reads. Pretty also better than before, but this also full text search uh, allows us <clears throat> to make, to find something that's in all columns contains hunting, hunting, hu sorry. Uh, so we had actually only six logical reads and we find all the, uh, meaning that in the whole JSON document, you have this, uh this word okay so it's uh, pretty much faster because otherwise you should first parse all the columns and the values and uh, search all the columns okay let's clean this okay one handy use of uh, json is this so you probably know that you have a large table <clears throat> By large meaning you have a lot of columns, okay. This is a standard product production example. You have 86 columns with some values and the boss is asking you, give me only the columns that have different values. Oops, and you have a problem, of course. So see, this is the example of CIS database. 
and as you know, the master and the model, I want to find all the columns that are different in these two databases. So let's try this. It was pretty much fast. It's not so much code and you get only the columns that are actually different here. And this is uh, this is uh, one of the best features of using JSON in SQL. So you can compare column by column to tables and get different values. Okay. Uh, we have a question for you, Dami, yes? from uh, Laura Santis. Can you search for combination of strings with contains to different values, I mean? Mm, I think so yes, you. but uh, I think there is no problems, but uh, you will have the problem, of course. Uh, yes, it, it of course it's possible, but uh, you must uh, a little bit know your data and what what uh, containing it because uh, combination of strings uh, depends if you want to have it in the same node or in different nodes or whatever because uh, if we put for example this or customer data or for example okay let's make another here i don't know x y z so you you will get the rows where these two two strings are in that contains actually but this is uh, this not is not a guarantee that actually they will be uh, together in something in the same array or something you you will get only records that contains these values no matter of the position of them okay so uh, you must, of course, know your data and what they are containing so that you actually can make uh, good uh, good uh, search searches. So maybe one one uh, sometimes it's better to, for example, add computed columns and sometimes it's better to use full text search and all depends on the case you want to achieve. I think Laura is happy with the answer. She answers, OK, now I understand. Perfect. So, oh, OK. But full, full text search is a whole topic on its own as well. Yes, of course. Uh, OK, uh, you can use JSON for uh, process uh, comma separated list of values. Yes. So something like uh, uh, split, string split, yes and uh, it's okay but uh, it's a little bit it, it's not so good because uh, you have problems because uh, you must know that the input data is okay so you will get an exception is something is wrong here okay uh, okay sorry and this is another with check constraint. And we are finished actually with the demo. So let's return to our PowerPoint. And actually, I'm done. So my last slide is something like thank you, I think. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Damir. It was good. Uh, it's always uh, you'd like to have another hour or so in the end, but uh, we'll have to live with just having one hour lunch breaks. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sorry for my 10 minutes uh, that I finished 10 minutes after. Uh, you you didn't get to start sharp either because I was taking a few minutes in the beginning, so don't worry. It's it okay. looks like people were still interested. Most people stayed till the end. So I think Thank you, did you. Good. Talk to Mika. Thank you also. Thank you all. We have something in the chat. Let's see. It's just very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Damir. Thanks. Thank you. So it seems like people are satisfied. And uh, if anyone missed it, it's going to be on YouTube and on SQLFriday.net as well.
and the materials also yes yeah and the slides and uh, and if there were any any demos that you didn't get the time to run it will be up there as well uh, i just posted the link to next sql friday which will be with kevin chant and sander stad who will talk about azure devops uh, like all the cool kids use i think it will be pipelines and uh, i don't know we'll see quite different from this though because this was very code oriented and the next is going to be more process oriented but uh, data platform is a wide uh, area